Hey everyone! In this video I will teach you how to summon most, if not all of the NPCs in Dark Souls 3 in chronological order. Some aspects of this guide are time sensitive, so it's best to follow this from the start of a new game. There will be spoilers. Also, this will not include Ziegvard's questline because you do not technically summon him. Now before we begin, you need to be in Ember form in order to see summon signs. Not including Saris abandoning you if you join Rosaria's finger, I am currently unaware of Covenant's affect any other summoning. I did not join any Covenants in this guide, so if you follow the guide and still can't see a summon sign to appear, try removing yourself from a Covenant if you are in one. And whenever I say speak to an NPC, I mean keep talking to them until they start repeating themselves. Now to begin, while facing the entrance to Firelink Shrine, take a hard left and follow the path until you find Swordmaster, then kick his ass or push him off the cliff. Now you will find a summon sign right before Vort of the Boreal Valley. Lionite Elbert is a little bit further back on the terrace in the same area. No requirements for him. Warning: If you choose to kill Emma to activate the Dancer of the Boreal Valley before Vort, Lionite Elbert will not appear anymore because you're a monster, but Swordmaster will still be available. Now before we get to the next boss, things start getting a little messy here because there's so much to do, so I'll just explain it in the order I did it. First of all, go find Yule after you kill Vort and accept his services. He's right before the undead settlement gates. He will appear in Firelink Shrine now. Talk to him to draw out true strength. You need to do this five times total before you kill the Abyss Watchers, otherwise you will miss out on summoning Yuria and Londor Pale Shade. You can draw out true strength every time you die twice. If you do this correctly, Yul will die and Yuria will appear instead. While we're back in Firelink Shrine, we may as well talk to Hawkwood to get acquainted with him. Now we want to be able to ask the services of Egon of Kareem. Near the White Birch Tree, go into the graveyard area to find the Mortician's Ashes. Give them to Shrine Maiden and buy the Grave Key. Yeah, there's a way to do it without buying the key, but whatever. Go to the sewer and unlock the door, and follow the long path to find Irina. Once you reach her, she'll ask you to touch her, which is a little bit weird, we only just met her. So we just pretend. Keep talking to her to send her to Firelink Shrine. Now talk to Egon waiting outside until he says he will help you. If you give Irina any Dark Miracle Tomes and buy the Dark Miracles from her, Egon will be hostile and unable to be summoned. Keep moving on until you find Anri and Horus at the Road of Sacrifices. Exhaust their dialogue. Head to Firelink Shrine to find Cirrus here now. Speak with her. Also, let us speak with Hawkwood again to receive an item. After this, head on to Farron's Keep. Go find the old wolf of Farron because we need to get the Dreamcatcher's ashes right over here. After obtaining it, give it to the Shrine Handmaiden. I just tell her where I got it. Reload Firelink Shrine to find Cirrus here again and she will offer her assistance. If you ever join Rosaria's Covenant, Cirrus will leave forever. Back at Farron's Keep, we want to grab some items first. From the Keep Ruins bonfire, take a hard left to find the Sage Scroll among some enemies and dead mushroom people. Back at the bonfire again, turn right and follow the path I'm taking by hugging the wall until you reach a small alcove guarded by basilisk frogs. Over here you will find the Golden Scroll. Be in Ember form. We want to be invaded by Yellowfinger Hazel here. She can be a pain, and yes, Hazel is a girl. Killing Hazel here can eventually lead you to summoning her for the Abyss Watchers at the cost of ever summoning Ceres. It's not really worth it, but click here to find out how. Now we can leave Farron's Keep and head back to Road of Sacrifices. Go towards where the Crystal Sage boss would be, turn around and go upstairs to find Orbeck. 
He'll offer his services only if you have at least 10 intelligence. If you meet that requirement, he will go to Firelink Shrine. Give him the scrolls, or else he will disappear after you kill four bosses. Having sent Irina to Firelink Shrine and talking to Egon, you will find Egon's summon sign for the Crystal Sage boss battle right behind this pillar. Advancing to the end of Cathedral of the Deep, you should find Anri's and Horus' summon sign right before the boss. And if you follow Ceres' quest line, her summon sign will be right over here. If you can't find Ceres' summon sign, head to Firelink Shrine, make sure she's gone, and then head back. She should appear now. After defeating the Archdeacons of Deep, go to Firelink Shrine and talk to Anri here to hear him say they are going to Aerithil. Back at Farron's Keep, before the Abyss Watchers, you will find Londor Paleshade here right beside the bonfire. They will only appear if you have received all five Dark Sigils from Yule and have had Yuria appear. You need to do this before you kill Abyss Watchers, otherwise Yuria will never appear, voiding her quest and summon sign. You'll be able to find Blackhand Gothard summon sign over here, no requirements. You can also find Ceres' summon sign over here if you are following her questline. If you want to, or have already voided Ceres' questline, you can summon Hazel for this one single battle. Here's how to do it. After defeating Hazel as she invades you in Farron's Keep, give a Pale Tongue to Rosaria. One can be found immediately before the rafters to reach her guarded by a thrall. Doing this will void Ceres' questline, but if you don't care about that, continue. Now you'll be able to find Hazel's summon sign near the Keep Ruins bonfire by the Tower of Slugs. Look how proper she is. She is pretty awesome and will kick the Abyss Watcher's ass. Literally kick it. <clears throat> After killing Abyss Watchers, Head to Firelink Shrine and speak to Hawkwood again. He'll give you another item. Also, you should find Egon here as well. So go on ahead and exhaust his dialogue. In the catacombs, find Anri over here and tell him you don't know where Horus is. Continue on through the catacombs until you get to this area before the Wooden Bridge. Be in Ember form, and do this before you kill High Lord Wolner. Open the gate and move through the corridor. This is to summon Night Slayer Sorig. You will be invaded by Sorig. After he makes you cry for a bit, muster up the power to kill him so we can summon him later on. After that, find Anri up here and tell him you still don't know where Horus is. From the bonfire in Smoldering Lake, go forward until you reach the lake itself, and hug right until you reach an alcove. You will find a hollowed Horus here. Make sure to kill him! I still don't tell Anri where Horus is after that. Though I'm not sure if it matters, I just don't. Now that we're down here, we can find Great Swamp Cuculus and her summon sign here. And we can find Night Slayer Sorig's summon sign here by the bonfire to the right of the boss fog gate, only if you kill them in the catacombs. You can summon both of them to help you against Old Demon King. If you follow Ceres' quest line, upon reaching the first bonfire after the barrier in Aerithil, head back to where you fought the crocodile wolf monster, and you will find her summon sign here. But she's actually summoning you to fight off an invader. Help her out, and then talk to her in the shrine for her thanks. When you get to the bonfire in the Church of Yoshka, you will find Anri here saying he can't find Horus still. Make sure to exhaust all dialogue with Anri. There is an assassin hiding in this room here disguised as a statue. Do not kill them. They need to kill Anri. If you're not following Yuria's questline to have Anri killed, you'll be able to be summoned by him later on. Before the boss fight with Sullivan, 
You can find three summon signs here if you have followed this guideline properly. Henry of Astora over here to the left, and Londor Pale Shade over here to the right, if you are following Yuria's story. Blackhand Gothard can also be summoned here in the center. After this boss fight, go speak to Yuria at Fireling Shrine and exhaust her dialogue. She will tell you Anri is ready to be married to you now. Ooh, how exciting. Remember Orbeck? Me neither. But we are still missing two scrolls for him. So now we have to head to the profane capital. Make your way to the toxic swamps with my scary ex-girlfriends and climb up the ladder on the right side of the building. Climb to the rooftop to find a sorcerer NPC. Kill them to receive Logan's scroll. Now that we're near Ann Arlando, Henry has been killed and the marriage may proceed. There's normally an illusory wall here before the large spiraling spinning staircase, but for me it was already gone. If it isn't, hit the statue that would be there and go forward. Speak to the assassin to receive a sword needed for the marriage. Go up to your betrothed to find him already dead and stab him with the sword. Because the Lord knows that the only way I'm going to get married is if someone arranges it for me with a dead person. <laughs> oh. After the ceremony, head back to Fireling Shrine and speak to Yuria. We're done with her for a while now. If you are not following Yuria's quest and Anri is still alive, or you killed the assassin in the church, you will find Anri's summon sign after opening up the giant doors leading back to the bonfire in Ann Arlando. This again is him summoning you to kill Aldrich. After killing Aldrich and following Ceres' questline, you can find her summon sign right before the Curse Rotted Great Wood boss. This is her summoning you to help her defeat someone. Speak to her in Firelink Shrine after for her to pledge total allegiance. If you have completed all of Hawkwood's dialogue and received the items from him, you will be able to find a summon sign here to aid you in fighting Oseros, the Consumed King. If he's not here, go back to Firelink Shrine and make sure he's gone. If he's not, keep talking to him. You'll be able to summon Swordmaster in the secret untended graveyard if you had previously defeated him at Firelink Shrine, right outside the boss arena. If you had previously exhausted Egon's dialogue in Firelink Shrine, you will find a summon sign to the right of the Dragon Slayer armor boss. You'll also find Cirrus' summon sign on the stairs leading to the boss. In the Grand Archives, you will find a Crystal Sage enemy. It'll teleport around the level as you deal damage to it, but upon killing it, it'll drop the final scroll needed for Orbeck. Receive the Crystal Scroll and give it to Orbeck. Now you have to purchase all of the items in his store. Even if you already have a copy of that spell, you need to buy all of Orbeck's spells. Afterwards, exhaust his dialogue and he'll peace out before he gets too jealous with how awesome we are. Make sure he's actually gone from Firelink Shrine, or else his summon sign won't appear later on. Before we go fight the two princes, we will now find Orbeck's summon sign right up here. You will also find Ceres and her summon sign closer to the boss up the stairs. Again, you can summon one or both, but actually having both makes this fight really fun. Heading to the secret Arch Dragon Peak location, you can find Hawkwood before ringing the bell to fight the Nameless King. If you did ring the bell, his summon sign will be gone. Hawkwood's summon sign is over here right near the Belfry Bonfire. Hawkwood, oddly enough, only wants to be summoned to help you get the Twinkling Dragon Torso. He is really helpful though. If you have Hawkwood summoned and proceed to ring the bell, he will use a black separation crystal to get out. Even Hawkwood knows he doesn't want to fuck with this boss, leaving you to die over and over again, miserable and alone. And now, here we are at the final boss. If you have followed Yuria's questline, you can find both Londor Pale Shade right over here, and Yuria herself right before the boss. This triggers an alternative ending, and both of them are pretty awesome for this boss. Oh yeah, 
You can also summon the Fire Keeper if you give her the eyes of a Fire Keeper, which you can obtain from the Untetted Graves, but you have to do that before you kill the Lord of Cinders, and then you get another ending. Alright, that's it! This guide is done! I'm done! I hope it helps, and you'll be able to summon whoever you want to. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, and I will answer them as soon as possible. And if you liked this video, which you probably didn't, but whatever, feel free to watch my other stuff because most of it doesn't have commentary.